Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Wednesday, September 7th, 2021. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Midday Power Surge. We have to go through crises in these last days because Christ promised that this would be found in the journey of God's professed people for the closing scenes of this earth's history. Christ had to go through it before he could return to heaven. And praise God, strength is available. So all I'm asking you today, brothers and sisters, during this midday power surge, is just be faithful as you go through crises. O oh, brother, O oh, sister, be faithful. These things won't happen forever. The only thing that will last is eternal life. That's the only thing that will last forever. Psalm 30 and verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. So until then, brothers and sisters, put some pep in your step with a song. That acronym PEP, patience, endurance, and prayer. And remember, song is a weapon we can always use against discouragement. All right, friends, let's launch into this midday power surge content. The Bible tells us in Matthew 24, Verse 7 through verse number 9, that God's people must expect sorrow. And what would be the signs that the beginning of sorrows are here? The Bible lists four things. The wars, the famines, the pestilences, the earthquakes in diverse places. And the question is, are these things happening now? Yes. Are they becoming more frequent and more disastrous? Yes. Are they happening simultaneously? Yes. So what says Matthew 24, verse 8 and verse 9? These are the beginning of sorrows, brothers and sisters. And as my wife said several months ago, we're not now at the beginning of sorrows. The beginning began several decades ago. We're now at the ending of sorrows. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Things are only going to get worse. Look at the screen, brothers and sisters. There it is in bold relief. Speaking of the pestilences, and then we will address the climate change crises. The pestilences make life difficult for people who are not inoculated, make life how? More difficult. That's it, brothers and sisters. Not the beginning of sorrows now, but we're at the end of sorrows. Just hold on. Be faithful, brothers and sisters. This won't last forever. Notice what's happening also in Nigeria. Make things more difficult for those who are not inoculated. Nigeria. We covered this several weeks ago. It needs to be repeated, and you will see why. It says clearly, look at the words on the line in red. People who are not inoculated won't be able to attend church services in their buildings. It's right there, my friends, on the line in red. People who are not inoculated won't be able to access banking services. That's why I'm repeating this. Banking services, brothers and sisters, why did I repeat this? The purpose of this reiteration is to show you that right now, right now as I speak, brothers and sisters, there is a launching of what is called inoculation economy. And this inoculation economy is spreading fast like a virus would spread rapidly, infecting individuals. It's infecting nations. Did you see what we just covered in Nigeria? 
look what's happening not in nigeria that continent it's a part of that continent there in africa look at the other continent the land down under by the way that's australia look at the screen here brothers and sisters the victorian premier this is uh, daniel andrews he says he will launch an economy that is only for people who are inoculated there it is brothers and sisters an economy that's only for people who are inoculated you think about that brothers and sisters it's right there on the screen let's read this look at that look at the headline skip on down to the paragraph this came out on yesterday september 6th in this report it says victorian premier daniel andrews has sent a clear message as to what the future of the economy looks like in the state saying proof of double inoculation will now be the price of entry there is going to be an inoculated economy that's it brothers and sisters and you get to participate in that if if what a condition brothers and sisters if you are inoculated with the pestilence 19 magic bullet that's it brothers and sisters and what came to my mind is this notice the blue words he says this is the future economy it's right there blue words the future of the economy the future economy those of you who are alive just make note of that phrase the future economy my friends remember nothing happens by accident there's no incidents here friends everything is prophetic a future economy so draconian that only those who have received the pestilence 19 panacea will be able to participate in this so-called future economy that he has described as inoculated economy only brothers and sisters let me tell you something satan's vip economy in the future is now here did you catch that that needs to be repeated satan's future vip economy is here what do i mean by vip look at the screen brothers and sisters what does vip mean those of you who are alive vip a very important person vip very important person only those individuals are going to be able to participate have you ever been to functions and you see various uh, seats rows of seats and there is a, a tape a line a cord wrapping around those uh, rows of seats you see a tag uh, v i p and those who walk in are the people look at the screen that they call chief individuals those people are the heavyweight those people are the superstars it's right there brothers and sisters all right those are the individuals now what would the opposite be mr nobody all right my friends and notice now while vip represents very important person i want to say this this vip economy that only those who have received the inoculation will be able to participate in here is my parody of the vip virus inoculated people economy did you catch it my friends and give me yours give me yours your vip application for this economy mine today just offhand virus inoculation people are the only individuals that can participate in this economy brothers and sisters is this not satan's future economy that is now here right now remember the pestilences will bring sorrow you know my friends one of the greatest things that will bring sorrow upon people is not to be able to buy or sell they cannot sustain and provide for themselves nor for their loved ones that would bring sorrow that would bring sorrow and while they cast us out from their vip 
economy. Inoculated. Inoculated economy. Praise God. That in Christ's eyes, we are God's VIP. Those who surrender all to Christ are Christ's VIP. Very important person. I'll give you a quote to ponder and meditate upon. We are told, my friends, in volume 3, page 188, the soul is of infinite value. Its worth can be estimated only by the price paid to ransom it. Calvary, Calvary, Calvary shows the value of our soul. Are we God's VIP? We need to surrender, brothers and sisters. Now let's get back here. So now, the pestilences with its policies have created this inoculated economy. What will climate change do? Will the policies to combat climate change also create an economy only for Sunday worshipers? Brothers and sisters, can you see the application? Look at this now. I'll give you one scripture for this point and one quotation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through verse 17. It shows us Satan's future economy, the devil's future economy. You won't be able to buy or sell except you bow the knee to Babylon, the image of Babylon, Babylon's mark, Babylon's system. Since God's system is both health and worship, Babylon's system is also a counterfeit health and worship, if that's clear, my friends, type in the words, Amen. A nail in a sure place. Now comes the quotation, The Desire of Ages, page 121. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break God's law in obedience to earthly powers, they will be forbidden to buy or sell, and it will finally be decreed that they shall be put to death. There it is, brothers and sisters. Satan's future VIP economy has now been put in place, brothers and sisters. And again, what does the Victorian premier say? It's time to launch the blue words, the future economy. When I read that, brothers and sisters, the Lord gave me another application of this. Because remember, the great puppet master is popery under Satan. And we were told, brothers and sisters, that papal leaders have all said recently, it's time to use the pestilence 19 crisis as a way to prepare the future. Not prepare for the future. That's how we would speak naturally. They said, prepare the future. And one of the uh, examples of preparing the future from the papers of the beast is to install, launch, establish, set up an economy that only those who go along with Babylon's policy would be able to participate in it. Here it is, brothers and sisters. There it is. Mr. Turkson, the ambassador for Pope Francis, he says, the Pope asked us, told us, prepare the future. Red words, not prepare for the future. Headline, and what is the context? The global pestilence crisis, brothers and sisters. So very, very soon, brothers and sisters, now we're seeing an economy only for those who have been inoculated. Very, very soon, an economy only for those who are worshiping on Sunday. If that's clear, type in the word, a nail in a sure place. Let's get back to the land down under. In Australia, the premier wrote recently, we had a lockdown to combat the pestilences. Now he says, we don't want to return to another lockdown. No, 
it's time to lock out. Look at this. Lock out who? Those who refuse to receive the pestilent 19 elixir. Who can? Read this, brothers and sisters. There it is. He writes, we're going to move to a situation where to protect the health system. I want everyone to note that phrase. To protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not inoculated and who can be inoculated. Last sentence. The economy, as best it can, will operate as close to normal as possible to people who have had both doses. Brothers and sisters, I wonder if you saw three things right here. Do you see famine? Economy, number one. Do you see a pestilence? Yes. Now, do you see a war? Yes. Lock out. That's Matthew 24, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9. Not the beginning of sorrow. We're at the end of sorrow. Get back to the quotation. The blue words, to protect the health system. We are going to lock out people who are not inoculated and can be. Now, friends, it's going on right now. Here is my application. To protect not just the health system, but to protect earth, to protect nature, to combat climate change, to combat the climate crisis, we are going to have to lock out people who refuse to worship on Sunday and who can worship on Sunday but refuse. If that application is clear, just type in the words, a nail in a sure place, brothers and sisters. Now watch. Now, Mr. Andrews, the report says that the businesses have all supported the launching of this inoculated economy only brothers and sisters that's a fulfillment of revelation chapter 18 the beast power babylon in verse 2 verse number 3 says the merchants are also in league the merchants have conflated with babylon revelation 18 verse 2 and verse 3 look at your screen key point the victorian government will trial increased freedoms increased freedoms for those people who have received the double inoculated next key point victorian businesses have thrown their support behind an inoculation passport scheme this thing is a scheme now friends listen to this now as he states premier Andrew, I won't play all of it. You can find the video. I won't play all of it. I'm going to redact and edit out some keywords. But listen to what he said. We're not going to go back to a lockdown. Listen to what he says. Watch. And we are not going to have a situation, well, at least not in Victoria, where we lock the whole place down to protect people who won't protect themselves. So what are you going to do then? Since you won't go back to what you did last year and early, early this year. What is the solution? Listen to this now. Not locked down, but lock out. Listen. From a situation where to protect the health system, we've got everybody locked down. We're going to move to a situation where to protect the health system, we're going to lock out. Mm, 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 mm. Should I repeat that? Listen to this one more time, brothers and sisters. A nail in a sure place, clear as crystal. From a situation where to protect the health system we've got everybody locked down we're going to move to a situation where to protect the health system we're going to lock out mm -hmm. brothers and sisters i'm going to share with you something that this spirit is of the spirit of the devil brothers and sisters only satan will trample upon the right of conscience only satan would cast people out who refuse to yield up liberty 
of conscience. I took my Bible, and I hope you do so also. I know some of you are in the marketplace. I know some of you are busy right now, but if you can, note these scriptures I'm going to share with you. And the key phrases in these scriptures are lock out, which is synonymous to cast out, which is also synonymous to put out. And the first thing I want to say, what you're now seeing, those who stand for liberty of conscience are being cast out. What you're seeing is prophecy being fulfilled. These things were prophesied to take place and they're now transpiring brothers and sisters and i'm begging you as i began this soliloquy i begged you brothers and sisters don't give up hold on hold on just be faithful as you go through sorrow just be faithful it's only going to get worse but remember my friends as you put some pep in your step with a song Comfort will be yours, a time of sorrow. Look at this, brothers and sisters. John chapter 16, verse 1 through verse 7. Did Christ prophesy these things? Verse 1, I, I'm going to tell you some things, but don't be offended. What did Christ say in verse 2? They shall put you out. That's it, friends. Put you out of the synagogues. And they will think that they're doing God's service. You remember what happened in Nigeria? That current event I just covered in Nigeria? Look at verse 6. And because I've said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Time of sorrow, brothers and sisters, in connection with God's people being put out, being cast out. Verse 7. I'm going to send you the comforter. Just hold on. Now, some cynic and scoffer is going to say, John 16 was not talking about inoculations. Maybe you missed the point. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 7, Jesus says, look for the principal things in Scripture. Look for principles. It's the principles that we are addressing. These things have been prophesied. Look at this. John chapter 9, a second scripture. Verse number 22. What happened, brothers and sisters, in John 9? There was a policy at the first advent that those who would confess Christ, Christ's truth, Christ's way of living, should be put out, cast out of the synagogue. All right, friends. And to be cast out of the synagogue at the first advent of Christ, you'd be cast out of participating in the civil affairs of the Jews. Remember, it was called the Jewish economy. All right, friends. Cast out. You know what it means now. You see the application now. What happened? There was a young man who did not renounce or abjure his belief in Christ, what happened to him in verse 34? They cast him out. That's it. He was locked out. That's clear, brothers and sisters. He was locked out. And friends, I'm going to share with you now another scripture. At the first advent, that there were some who did not believe the draconian, diabolical, inimical policies, but to be able to participate in the religious life of the church and the civil life of the nation. At the first advent, they renounced Christ, renounced his way of living. Is that going to be me? Is that going to be you? It's time for self-examination. John chapter 12, look at verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers... Also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out, put out, locked out of the synagogue. Verse 43, for they loved the praise of men. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God, brothers and sisters. Praise of God. Now I want to encourage all of us 
We're all in this crisis together. We all have to go through a time of sorrow together. The Bible says, my friends, do not be dismayed. Do not become discouraged as we are cast out, put out, locked out, treated as outcasts, treated as pariahs of society. The Bible says your reward is in heaven. The Bible says on September 7th, 2021, leap for joy. Pastor, is that in the Bible? Look for yourself. Luke chapter 6, verse 21. Contextually, current event, read these words with me. It says, blessed are you that hunger now, you shall be filled. That's the economy. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh that sorrow. Verse 22, blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. Separate you from their company, church and state company, and shall reproach you, and cast out, and cast out your name as evil, as evil people. For the Son of Man's sake, verse 23, rejoice you in that day. So what's today's date, my friends? I'm waiting on you. What's today's date? Rejoice you in that date, September 7, 2021, and leap for joy. Why? For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So what are we to do today, brothers and sisters? Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Their reward is coming. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 19, the Bible says, Do not have vengeance in your heart, brothers and sisters, to these demon-possessed individuals. The Bible says in verse 19, Vengeance belongs to God. He shall repay. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 16. Listen to this keenly. Listen attentively. Therefore, or they that devour thee shall be devoured. Uh huh. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity because they put us into captivity. Economic, financial, economy, uh, captivity. Let me say it one more time. Financial captivity, you're cast out. Spiritual captivity, you're cast out. Social captivity, you are cast out. All right. And they that spoil thee shall I spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Verse 17. Jesus says, I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith God, because they call thee an outcast. Mercy. What a scripture. They call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So what will happen to Zion? What label, what epithet will Zion, God's remnant carry, brothers and sisters, an outcast? Connect with this. Revelation 14, verse 1 through verse 5, we stand with the Lamb on Mount Zion. Zion will be labeled an outcast. Do you see the trajectory of these current events now? From pestilence 19 to combating climate change, from an economy only for those who are inoculated with Babylon's magic bullet to now an economy only for those who worship on Sunday. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 5, the Bible says, Hear God's word, you that tremble at his word. Listen, your brethren that hated you, your brethren that cast you out, your brethren that cast you out, your employer that cast you out, even SDA employers at the hospitals, the schools, the churches, <laughs> your brethren that cast you out for my name's sake, said the Lord. What do they say? 
the Lord be glorified. They cast us out and say, good riddance, get rid of them. But when Christ shall appear, he will appear to your joy. But they shall be what, brothers and sisters? Ashamed, the Bible says. Ashamed. My friends, write this down. Those of you who are alive, God's outcasts are not only called Zion. God's outcasts are Sabbath keepers. Are Sabbath keepers. Are you ready for this? Do you see the connection? Not only those who refuse Babylon's pestilence 19 panacea, but those who refuse Sunday worship are going to be labeled as outcasts. Isaiah chapter 56, verse number 6, it mentions Jew and stranger. Verse 6, they keep God's Sabbath. They take hold of God's covenant. Verse 7, God will bring them to his holy mountain in heaven. Verse number 8, verse 8, the Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. Brothers and sisters, so who are, what will God do to the outcast? He will gather to himself the outcast. Isaiah 56 and verse 8. Who are the outcasts? Verse 6, verse 7. By the way, read from verse 1 through verse 8. Those who are Sabbath keepers. If that's clear, type in the words, a nail in a sure place. All right. Look now for some more encouragement. Hold on, brothers and sisters. Put some pep in your step with a song. Oh, brother, oh, sister, be faithful. Psalm 147, verse 2 through verse 4. The Bible says now, the Lord doth build up Jerusalem. How? With whom does God build up Jerusalem, his church? Blue words. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. Wait a minute. Comparing those two scriptures, scripture upon scripture, the outcasts are Sabbath keepers. They will comprise Jerusalem. Here comes the encouragement. He healeth the broken in heart. Praise God. He binds up their wounds. Does he know us individually? Yes, he does. Verse 4, just as God telleth the number of the stars and calls the stars by their individual names, does God know us individually, brothers and sisters? Watch this. Steps to Christ, page 100, the relation between Christ and and each individual is distinct and full as if there was never another soul upon this earth for which he died. Brothers and sisters, that quote, every time I recollect it, every time I recite it, it brings both joy and also it brings tears to my heart. The relation between Christ and each individual is distinct. That's it, separate. And full. As if there were never another soul upon the earth, brothers and sisters. Now, I'm going to speak about something practical. As God's people are going to be treated as pariahs, treated as outcasts, will be locked out cast out, put out from the economy. They can buy or sell, beginning with the, with the movement to combat the pestilence 19. Next will come the issue over worship and climate change. We are now to prepare ourselves to assist the outcast. In other words, make room for the coming outcasts the coming refugees, watch this, Acts chapter 7, verse 19. The Bible says, my friends, in the time of Moses, and we must have a similar experience, it says, the civil power of Egypt, red words, 
cast out their young children, cast out their children to the end that they might not live. Look at verse 20. Moses was born in that time period. Brothers and sisters, was Moses the deliverer? Yes. To bring them to the earthly promised land of Canaan? Yes. And what was the current event? What was the current event in the time when the deliverer was born? It was time for the exodus. Children, God's people, were being cast out. Brothers and sisters, should I spend more time to reiterate what I just covered in the current events? So what is God showing us? The deliverer is about to come. Jesus Christ, the true, final Exodus is right upon us. Hold on, brothers and sisters. Be faithful. Skip on down. Verse 21 of Acts 7. And when Moses now was cast out, look at the practical experience. Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. In other words, there were people from the government of Egypt that did God's bidding. So there are a few who are part of Babylon system, promoting the casting out, promoting the locking out, the promoting of putting out God's faithful people who stand for liberty of conscience. A few of them will renege on their oath to follow Babylon system. And support God's faithful people and join with God's commandment, keeping people. Look now, Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 6. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? All right, friends. To let the oppressed go free. Oh, yes, friends. To undo the heavy burdens. Oh yes, that's God's true fast. To break every yoke. Look at verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou, watch this now, bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. And don't be selfish. Last phrase. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Don't be selfish. My friends, make room in your house. Make room on your country property. That's why we launched STS Connect. It's on our website, prophesyagain.org. My friends, make room for the outcast. Make room, friends. God's too fast. It says that thou bring the poor, red words, that are cast out to thy house. That means we must have extra room. That's it, brothers and sisters. Is that practical enough? So why be discouraged if you are the poor being locked out? God al already has a way prepared for you. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Volume 7, Testimonies for the Church. Page 278 says, Worry is blind and cannot discern the future. But Jesus knows the end from the beginning. And in every difficulty, he has a way prepared to bring relief. Mm -hmm. Worry is blind. Just be faithful, brothers and sisters. And for those of us upon whom God has bestowed great blessings, make room for the outcasts, those who are cast out who are coming. Have extra clothes for those who are naked. Prepare extra meals for those who are hungry. Don't be selfish. By the way, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12, verse 13, verse 14, it mentions the Sabbath commandment, Sabbath worship, the Sabbath crisis. Make room, brothers and sisters. Oh, brother, oh, sister, be faithful. I'm going to leave it right there. See you tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time for another Midday Power Surge. Were you encouraged? Were you 
strengthened? Were you warned today, my friends? Did you receive hope? Put some pep in your step with a song. With a song. With a song. Oh, brother, be faithful. Oh, brother, be faithful. Soon Jesus will come for whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon we shall enter our glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown such deep, such unbounded and infinite love who died to redeem us his own? Oh, brother, be faithful, the city of gold, prepared for the good and the blessed, is waiting its portals of pearl to unfold, and welcome thee into thy rest. Then, brother, poor faithful, not long shall we stay in weariness here and forlorn. Time's dark night of sorrow is wearing away. We haste to the glorious morn. Oh, brother, be faithful, he soon will descend. Creation's omnipotent king. While legions of angels his chariot attend, and palmries of victory bring. O brother, be faithful, and soon shalt thou hear thy Savior pronounce the glad word. Well done, faithful servant, thy title is clear to enter the joy of thy Lord. O brother, be faithful, eternal.